We've just been talking about what a bad month it was for equities in May, but of course bonds were the one asset class that didn't suffer. Are you tempted to change your reallocation in favour of bonds over equities, given everything we've learnt in May? Well, we moved to uh, an equities and the way position uh, a couple of months ago uh, with the assumption that earnings expectations were too high, the global growth was weak. So I think we are less convinced about bonds because I think the valuation, in not only the US but also Europe, is very, very unattractive. So we feel that probably the best time now is to be long cash and, and we don't expect bond yields to fall drama, um, even more from here, to be honest. So I think it's the, our, our allocation is to be cautious on equities but not to be very bullish on bonds mm. at that time. Day. With the S&P 500, look at good morning. The S&P 500 down 6.6%, second worst month since 1960. Are you tempted after that kind of a drawdown, or do you think there's a better probability of perhaps a, a more substantive correction to come? It's incredibly difficult because it's all really about a trade war. And, and I think the problem with this is that a tweet in the middle of the night can change everything. Obviously now the, the news are very negative because today is Mexico, the other day is India, maybe tomorrow is Australia. So obviously all this is very negative. I have to say though that the technical indicators are still suggesting that the market is not massively oversold. Uh, valuation is not incredibly cheap. So I, I think it's still a little bit too early to call the end of this kind of correction. Uh, but you know, there may be another tactical ban opportunity this year, even if we are strategically quite bearish on equities because we expect a recession next year. So it's, it's not kind of, but tactically there could be a ban opportunity, but not, but, not, but not now. Is the Fed going to capitulate to the market expectations in terms of the cuts that are priced into bond markets and also perhaps tightening financial conditions if equities continue to decline? I think the Fed will cut next year because uh, we expect a recession next year. But I think this year the expectations are a little bit too optimistic. I think the Fed will wait until there is more evidence that we knock our rates because there is now uh, a trade war between unless you see a significant deterioration of consumer confidence, significant deterioration in the data we don't really see it. So I think the Fed will be patient. It was patient to hike rates. We were also patient to cut rates. Next year, yes, this year I think is, is, is a closer call. Mm. Uh, if we begin to debate recession, uh, as, as one or two of the houses have said, by 2020, look, will there be a fiscal response, let's say, in the United States if we see the kind of dramatic slowdown that, for example, JP Morgan are saying this morning down to 1% uh, by the second quarter, would there be a fiscal response? Are, are we overly focused on the monetary side? Well, we are overly uh, focused on the Federal Reserve and the monetary side of things. So this has been actually the case for the last 10 years. The problem in the U.S. and the reason why we are kind of cautious for the U.S. is that if you look at the budget deficit now in the U.S., is a budget deficit normally you have when the economy is struggling, now when the economy is growing at 3%. So I think there is a pretty limited um, kind of room for, for fiscal easing. I think there is much more room for monetary easing in a way. Uh, and I think so would be first monetary easing, then probably fiscal, but let's not forget it's an election year next year in the U.S. and that obviously complicate mm. things quite, quite significantly.